I've had like four or five people on here that just told all the boys weren't working out. I've never gone home for it. He said to me, have you ever knocked someone out on the street? No, no, wait. How many of you have you knocked out on the street? I said, I'm about 100 and over the street. <laughs> you witnessed this. Joe Joyce, he's the biggest, toughest man I've ever sparred, ever met. Strong, tough, fit, tough lad. And Jason Cunningham defends his European Super Bantamweight title. Oh, and that's the reason why. Goodness me, first punch in the fight. Zolani, I'm going to fill you in. I'm going for wheel tile, and that's that. He knows he's in the last chance saloon here and the light heavyweight division just waiting to explode. Oh goodness me, well there's a terrific shot in the opening round. Apologies for the uh, technical issues that we just had there. I mean, David Adelaide, so used to breaking jaws everywhere, today broke our stream. Um, David, are you going to apologise to the, to the viewers? Sorry to the viewers at home watching yeah. it. Um, you know, technical difficulties. Sometimes these things happen. They happen. Uh, but just before that, before we had to cut to a holding slate, we were watching your knockout over Chris Healy. Yeah. Wembley Stadium. It wasn't quite the 94,000 when you knocked out your fella, but still... You're getting well, there. You're getting there. You're getting there. How do well, you reflect on it? Yeah, it was... Um, I mean, what a card to be on. It's going to go down in the history books. God willing, I get to have my own history in, you know, in the future. And um, like I said to you before, Chris was the opponent we wanted. Mm. But I mean, I mean, credit him for stepping in anyways, because we made it happen. And uh, yeah, I mean, look, like you said, that sort of knock, I wanted to kind of referee to keep it going. I can really let my hands go and then mm -hmm. put on a performance. But at the same time, I can't knock the judge or the referee, sorry, for doing his job. And when are we going to see you next? When are we going to see those fists fly? God willing, soon. I mean, yeah. I'm a fight that's always in the gym anyways. Yeah, yeah. So these things, I mean, I'm, I'm easy to kind of do business with. What you got to do is give me the call. Um, of course, I was meant to be on the show, like I said, mm. tomorrow, but because of the injury, you know, um, it never happened. But, um, you know, God, God works in miraculous ways. So we don't know if it was a blessing or a curse. So you're 9 0 now, right? Um, I guess soon you'll start stepping it up, right? Mm. There's, there's mm. probably people in your sights. Off camera, you keep saying to me, I want Nathan Gorman. Well, Gorman, I don't know, you know, I'll take all of them. Lucas Brown, oh. you know, I think I've got a new profound hate for him. Well, I don't what, want to call it happened? hate, but we've got some sort of, some sort of problem. I mean, Did he one, beef day, with you? one day I was just scrolling online and a lot of people were tagging me in something. I thought, what are they tagging me? And usually I don't even feed into it, but I just kept getting tagged into it. So, um, yeah, I went online, looked at it, and someone tagged me on his post, and he was like, like, who's this fella, like, basically just completely disregarded me as a worthy opponent, and I thought I'd kick your ass. So, um, yeah, next thing you know, he blocked me. Oh. He went, I don't blame him. So when I see him, I'm, he's going to be in the UK, so I'll see him in person. What has he blocked you on, Twitter or Instagram or both? Instagram. I don't even know about Twitter. He's wow. blocked me on Instagram. I tagged him, got a few people to tag him, you know, wind them up. Yeah. And, um, yeah, he blocked me. What a story. We can, we can reveal today that David Adelaide is blocked by Lucas Brown on Instagram. Uh, Lucas, if you are watching this, David, well, I mean, are you going to plead to be unblocked? or? No, 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 no. See you and I'll see you, Lucas. It's all right. Actually, tell him, because I think he's going to have a good look at you. I said, see you when I see you, Lucas. All business here. We've already got a call out. Just We're about 10 minutes into it. Um, David, we are here because Joe Joyce yeah. is back. Saturday night at the Ovo Arena, takes on Christian Hammer. You've shared many a round with Joe Joyce. Yes. Uh, tell us what you think of Joe Joyce as a fighter 
Why is he so difficult to beat? It's a juggernaut. I mean, he's called that for a reason. Um, very durable. Um, faster than people expect. It's not the fastest heavyweight, mm -hmm. but he does have some sort of speed. I mean, he lands his jab, he lands the right hand. I mean, we, we get to see that. And he, he lands it on elite opponents. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, I think that is a bit more... I think people go in there with the, with the actual thought process that he's going to be slow, he's going to be easy to read, and then they get surprised. But, um, and he's durable, he gets caught, he keeps coming forward, his defence is his chin. Um, he's a world-level fighter. I think he's kind of proven it now. I think he's ranked number one in the WBO. He's one with the WBO, two with the WBC. So he's ranked. He's knocking, on the, door, he's knocking on the door. I think he's he's pretty much there. He's ready to take these big guys on. So, so did he surprise you when you sparred him? You said there about his speed and it's. Surprising. Yeah, I think it's I think it's more so because he doesn't show his shots. How's it going? Um, he doesn't actually show it because what he does is he just, you know a lot of fighters, they kind of talk to throw shots with their shoulders. He doesn't really use his shoulders. So when he does stick a jab at you, I mean, when he saw his performance against Dubois, he just stuck the jab out all day long and landed it all day long. You know, um, couldn't really, Dubois couldn't adjust to that. So um, and I think it's because he knows how to throw it correctly. He knows how to use his attributes. He knows he's not the fastest. And um, he kind of knows the hand speed he's got and he, man he manages to make it work. So what, I mean, look, you, you are, this is something I asked Joe Joyce about Tyson Fury, like, I said, how do you beat Tyson Fury? Well, how do you beat Joe Joyce? You know, you never know. You're an unbeaten British heavyweight coming yeah. through. How on earth do you beat Joe Joyce and you're not allowed a cricket bat? Yeah, I mean, easy with hand speed, movement, you know, using, using what I've got, using my attributes. I've got so many attributes, mm -hmm. you know, over a lot of these fighters. It's just about using my attributes and staying switched on for the whole 12 rounds. Um, yeah, I think movement as well. You know, um, I'm not going to rip into him too much, but yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah of a, course, of course. Well, look, this this is his night on Saturday night, and he, he is knocking on the door uh, for the winner of Anthony Joshua against Alexander Usyk. Yeah. He's knocking on the door for that. He's in place. Uh, we don't know what's going to happen with Tyson Fury. Well, no. Have you got any inside track on what's happening with Tyson Fury? You're in in camp with him. You, you heard anything? I, I haven't. I haven't. Um, I mean, I'm, I mean, if the price is right, I'm pretty sure he'll come out of retirement. But we said half a billion. Half a billion. I mean, yeah. he's obviously looking at the deals everyone else is signing, and he's he's pricing himself up there, so he wants some sort of, I mean, generational wealth to, to come out of retirement. Mate, it, it would certainly be that. Mm. Um, what was it like being in in the Fury camp? How was all of that? Good. I mean, I'm a like I said, I was like it's like uni. I'm a freshers mm. just coming into uni. I'm in there with a lot of, you know, um, master degree students, and um, I was in there with, of course, Parker. There was Tyson. There was the um, Scottish heavyweight Martin McCauley. Jerome Miller came from America. All of these fighters are experienced. Mm -hmm. They might not be world level, but they're experienced, and um, they have way more experience than me. So they know how to prepare for world level fights, and you know they know how to operate at a certain level. So it was good for me as a student to kind of sit there and see how these guys prepare for battle. Were, were there days where you went away from it like, this is really hard? Or did you come away from the whole thing with your, your confidence up? Like, yeah, my confidence was, was, I mean, my confidence yeah. was through the roof. Yeah. You know, um, not being cocky. I mean, that's one thing about me is I stay in my lane and I know, I won't call out certain fighters mm -hmm. if I know I'm not ready for them yet. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm not a world level fighter yet. You give me, I reckon, 18, 24 months and I'll definitely be knocking on the door as well. But um, going into these spas, I was never out of my depth. It was real good work. And um, yeah, I think a lot of people were surprised when they see me close up, honestly. You know, it's one thing watching it on TV, it's another thing when you watch it behind closed doors when nobody's there and you see people trading level and you mm -hmm. see how people operate and see how people think and set things up because um, you know, I was just getting a lot of feedback, a lot of good feedback. And um, it was all good work. I mean, every single fighter went home with some sort of niggle. Yeah. I mean, that's what's going to happen when you put four or five of the top best heavyweights and determined heavyweights with each other. Everyone's going to be trading level. So like yeah. everybody went home in some sort of nigga. I remember the, the physio seeing everyone and thinking, What is happening there? Yeah, everyone seems to have something <laughs> going on. Like these boys have walked out of a car crash yeah. sort of thing. Um, Joe Joyce was meant to fight Joseph Parker. We've heard a lot about this. Uh, Frank doesn't really want to go in too much on Joseph Parker at the moment. I don't think he wants to feed into it. Yeah, um, but you were there when the two guys faced off backstage, right? You sort of got in and you was like, ooh, ooh and you, you made a bit of a bit of a show of it. Or, or, I had to add my two pence. So what, what, what do you think's happened here? I mean, what did they say? I mean, um, 
Parker couldn't get ready for the fight because he said his coach was obviously having a baby. Yeah. And then um, in that time, he ended up signing with another another um, TV TV channel. And um, of course, with the way logistics and politics works, it's not it's not going to happen. I thought I would have loved to have watched. I mean, I've seen the back and forth online. Um, boxers saying that like, they've contacted Queensby Promotions for yeah, and said to make sure to fight on their channel. And, but like Frank said, it's not going to happen. You know, um, it's uh, yeah. I, th I f feel as though barriers have suddenly got in the way of that fight that weren't uh, weren't necessarily there. How would you have seen that fight going? Good fight. I've seen both fighters. Yeah. I mean, um, both fighters are where they are for a reason. Mm. You know, um, I think I don't know who was the underdog and who and who. I'm not actually sure. I'm not sure so we got around to, know, to seeing the Dev. odds, but ob obviously I know that, you know uh, we're going to back Joe Joyce. You know, so and yeah, I don't uh, think it would have been as easy. Like, would it? I mean, whoever won, it definitely would have been tough. Yeah. You know, so if Parker won, it would have been a tough, mm -hmm. a tough win. And the same thing with Joe Joyce won, it would have been a, a tough win. You know, I mean, it would have been a very good. I'm not domestic. But it would have been a very good, so world level clash. Yeah, two top ten heavyweights, uh, maybe top five. Yeah. Uh, we've got uh, we've got Christian Hammer. On Saturday night, he always comes to fight. Always. Um, how, how do you think he's uh, he's going to get on on Saturday night? He takes a lot of good fighters yeah, the does. distance. He took uh, Frank Sanchez, the WBO number three, the distance only in his uh, a couple of fights ago. Yeah. So he's going to be game, right? Yeah, yeah, he definitely will be game. You know, he's not going to come and fall over. Um, but I don't see it being a problem for mm. Joyce, especially when he's looking at the likes of the Joshua's, the Furies, and the Usyks. Mm -hmm. You know, um, there's levels. And their stages, and Christian Hammer is not at the stage of these old level operators. So, um, but you'll, you'll probably take Joyce a couple of rounds. Joyce will have to break him down, um, be a bit smart because you know these fighters they, they kind of know how to survive. They know how to get through the rounds. You can't just do the normal blasting them out because it'll, it'll be a tougher job. So, I think it'd be a bit of a statement actually if Joyce was able to stop him in, in two rounds, as, as you say there. Having taken Luis Ortiz the distance, Frank Sanchez the distance, Tony Yoka, so many you have to be. A little bit special. Tyson Fury knocked yeah. him out. Uh, Huey Fury, it was like a retirement yeah, with a shoulder that's injury. That's yeah. It was a bit so here and there. Yeah. But um, no, it, it will be interesting. Yeah, I mean, sorry to cut you. Yeah, I mean, he might not do it in two rounds. So, not even necessarily two rounds, but he has to do it. I mean, I mean, if he wants to make a statement and then do better than Frank Sanchez, he wants to stop mm. him. But you know, sometimes when you go out there looking for the stoppage, it doesn't always come. So, you just got to go out and have fun. That's the main thing. You know, you've got to, you got to be reminded to have fun. It's your job, you know. Um, you chose to do the sport, so have fun. So I think he's got to go out there, have fun, show us something new, show us something different, show us what he's been working on. Yeah, because he's been inactive. Yeah, he's been out the ring for for a year now. Yeah, um, he had he had that injury as well. It, look, some people are saying it may even be a blessing in disguise that it's exactly. not it's not someone like a Joe Parker in there, and that it's a slightly easier touch. Maybe so. Maybe so. I mean, um, there's nothing quite like experience under those lights. You can do all the rounds in the gym. You can do all the rounds in the bags and everything, but. It's when you get under those lights where it really matters, and you need to be active. What, what are we? Uh, what can we expect today? You've uh, you've done plenty of weigh-ins. You've done plenty of face-offs. So you've had uh, big burly fellas in front of you that yeah, you're sort yeah, of staring yeah. down. Um, do you think we'll get any sort of theatrics uh, from Joyce and Hammer? No, I think it'll be cordial. I mean, they, they seem to be quite pleasant fighters. Mm -hmm. You know, um, they don't really do the, the same thing that they did in the nineties when there was all this pushing and shoving and swearing and rolling around. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's not quite. It's not quite like the American sort of style where you know when everyone jumps up on the stage and there's a big theatrical sort of occasion, something going on. But um, I think it'll be cordial, but it's good, you know. At the same time, it doesn't take mm -hmm. away from the hype. People want to watch the fight. Um, Joyce is starting to become a household name in the UK. Yeah, you seen the advert, presumably, and yeah. Oh God, it made me laugh. What do yeah. you think? Come on, it was funny. It was funny. It was funny. It was, it was, it was, it was funny. It was funny. It was something new. Like, did you see? He did it at the actual press conference as well. He started yeah, called yeah, wonderful, yeah, 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 a yeah, wonderful yeah, yeah, yeah. moment. He it's called new. Christian new. Hammer a dunderhead. What if he called you a dunderhead? Well, I mean, how do you take something like that? I would have taken it as a as a dig. Well, I don't even know what it means, but I would have yeah. taken it as a dig. I mean, yeah. anything. Any, your you get, is, yeah. Well, look. You know they ain't going to be bigging you up. I was going to ask you about this, right? So you say if if someone had called you a dunderhead, it would be a dig. If you are at a university, for example, you've just done a little training session, you're going for a walkabout, and a couple of students start calling you names, and they can't start calling you this and calling you that. I know where you're getting with this. Well, tell me, how do you react in that situation? Because there's two schools of thought, right? Tell me, tell me where you are. I think it's different because when you don't see them every day, 
it doesn't really matter. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? If I'm walking down the street and someone's yelling something at me, realistically, once I keep walking and I take a turn and I come off the road, I'm, I'll probably never see that person again. Mm -hmm. So, um, but I mean, in, in that sort of situation, when you're seeing him all the time, it's, it's about laying on the law and having some respect. You know, um, so I think, I can't knock him. You know, because if I was in a bad mood, somebody said something to me, mm -hmm. I don't want to know how I'd react. I'd rather not think about it. So. Well, look, look, that, and, and that's that's a perfectly natural yeah. thing. I think, yeah, he's, he's coming. He's coming to some criticism. It's obviously about Anthony Joshua going after the the students. There's been some criticism, and there's some people saying, like you have, go and lay the law down. They've they, they've said this and that to you. Um, how do you see him getting on in the music rematch? Way better than he did in the first one. Yeah, you know. Especially for for a lot of reasons. I mean, he said he didn't even know he was down on the scorecards when he was fighting. Mm -hmm. um, he said he, there was no game plan going into the fight. Gregorio. So, so you know, I think he'll be do way better. You know, it'll be tougher for Usyk to, to kind of get the job done. Um, both fighters have what it takes to, to go home with the W. So it's going to be interesting. Yeah, no, it'll, it'll be a good fight, and uh, and Joe Joyce will be watching on. Uh, I'm sure he's he's well in line. WBO number one. WBC number two. Tell me about this one, right? We've just said Joe Joyce is WBC number two. Say Tyson Fury is retired, okay? Say he, he, he never comes back and he relinquishes his WBC belt. Number one with the WBC is Deontay Wilder. Can you imagine Deontay Wilder against Joe Joyce? No, that would be a fight I'd love to watch. Um, that would be very interesting. I mean, very, very interesting. Of course, I'm, I'm assuming it'll probably happen overseas in America. Just don't know. Wilder's the bigger name in the country, unless Frank, of course, brings it over here. Oh, you've seen what Frank but can do. You've seen what true. Frank over the road. You've seen no, what Frank true. can do. It's <laughs> true. It's true. You're not lying there. It'll be a fight I'd love to be a part of too. I mean, Fellas, see these sort of fights sure in our day and age is beautiful. I mean, beautiful now is our box now. Sorry, is our all time high. So you can't really go wrong, can you? That would be uh, atomic power against atomic chin. Question is, how do you see it going? Oh, what Joyce Wilder? Yeah. Bloody hell! I mean, that is some. That, that's that's some fight. That's some fight. I've got a look. I uh, I wear the the t-shirts. I wear the caps. I am Queensbury through and through. So, uh, a draw. No, I, 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 I joke. Joe Joyce all the way. Look, Joe Joyce will walk him down. He'll, he'll, you know, hope, he would probably get used to the power after, after a couple of minutes, you would hope. But it would be a difficult, difficult watch at times, I think. I was going to say, I mean, when shots come in that you don't see, it could be a different ball game. It would be a very good fight, though, because I know, I mean, Joyce is physically bigger than him, should be stronger than him, yeah. you know, um, in clinches or not throwing him around. It'll be, it'll be a good fight to watch, definitely. His chin is unbelievable, though, isn't it, Joe Joyce? Definitely. I mean, you, you must have found that when you were sparring him. What, what are you thinking when you're landing big shots and he's... Good. I mean, gets caught with certain shots, big, big shots, yeah. big, big shots, and he keeps coming forward, and you think, bloody hell, Joyce. How long are you going to keep this up for? You know, um, but he's clearly got a good chin. I think he doesn't even register when he gets hit with certain shots. You know, I've seen him get hit with certain shots, and, you know, he doesn't really register. I mean... We look at his fights. I remember I watched him against Bermingsa Vernon and hurt him. He still managed to survive. Did he hurt him? I, I know that the, there's a part that you're talking about where he was sort Through of... Through the body. was in the... Oh, was it a body shot? I yeah, saw yeah, a lot yeah, of yeah. right hands, but okay. Yeah, but then, of course, he carried on coming forward. Oh, Jennings. In the Jennings fight, oh, he, he hurt... Yeah, Sorry, Stiburn. I mean, yeah, yeah, no, Jennings. Jennings, yeah, we've seen him apologize. hurt Jennings. to the body. Jennings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fellas. Jennings, Fellas. Um, hit him with a body shot. That was three years ago. Yeah, 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 it was at the O2. Yeah, he hit him with a body shot. That hurt. Here but when it's the four to go I heard the green stone was meant to be a banger. Your life is going to be the best. That's it, yeah. Of course, the boys have to have power with their fans. So all of those who came on the mini bus. So, um... Back on the of his gym, there's, no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no real question there. You all, I, I, you think, I think he's, uh, I've heard anyway, and this may just be fiction to add to the whole, uh, the whole story, but I've heard his bone density is 1.5 times thicker than your average man. First I'm hearing of that. That's the, that's the first I'm hearing, but um, if, that, if that's the case, then so be it. I mean, he's definitely working in his favour. He's, he's a big, thick guy. Um, so generally... Let's let's talk about the rest of the heavyweight division. Daniel Dubois now yep. has picked up a WBA, uh, a version of the WBA World Heavyweight Championship, beating Trevor Bryan out in America. Uh, what did you think of that? And, and how good is it, by the way, to have another world title in the UK? In the very Christmas good, stable? very good. You know, it brings boxing over um, to the UK once again, and of course, people are going to be chasing after Dubois now. Mm. I mean, um, he knows that. 
So it was about looking at these sort of world-level fighters now, looking at who he could fight. So he's going to be involved in some good sort of clashes as well. Um, and he was, he's entertaining to watch. That's one thing we can say. We can't take it from him. He definitely is entertaining to watch. But um, I think it's a good thing. He seems to be tunnel vision. Yeah. Um, doesn't seem to have a social life anyway. So I feel like boxing is his life. So. Would well, you think that's good or bad? Because uh, I. I... I think you've got more of a social life than Daniel Dubois, I'd for, for so. example. But what well, you'd say, you'd agree. Yeah. Uh, but, but what do you think of that? There's there's the idea of him being tunnel vision. He's very much focused. Um, but do, should he have more of a social life? Or, I feel like what do you he think? Should, because life's hard. Life's already hard. Why do we make it hard on ourselves? Have some fun, you know. Let let loose, you know. Get the weight off your shoulders mm. and enjoy yourself. Um, in moderation. Because at the end of the day, we we'll fight us first. Open kills comes secondary, apart from family, of course. But um, I feel like you need to have a social life, you know, um, have your friends over, play the PlayStation, you know, or go on a, go on a holiday, um, you know, do something, do another hobby, just do something. You know, I mean, have someone to talk to, just have friends to kind of mingle with where you can go out and eat, do something. So you've, you've sparred him, right? You've spent time in, when he was at the Peacock, certainly, yeah. you've spent time around him and all that. Um, Whenever I've I mean, in the amateurs, it was more or less the same. So for me, it was kind of like what you, it made me you kind of become accustomed to it. I'll be known what his personality So it was never personal. Yeah. It's never personal. When you speak to him, he, of course, he speaks back when there's no cameras there. He speaks a bit more with that he, than he does on the TV, but um, he's not talking. He's not the person to keep going. Yeah. That makes sense. Well, Joe Joyce has just entered the building here. He towers over everyone, even even just well actually I'm looking at Tommy Fletcher, he's the six foot seven cruiserweight making his debut. Yes. Here is Joe Joyce. I'm not sure if he's gonna go on the scales first yeah. or not. But we will see uh, yeah. see very shortly the whole yeah. camp are here, Adam yeah. Morley, Shane Watson, the S Jam yeah. boys. Yeah. There yeah. is Big Joe, look yeah. at the size of him. Goodness me. This man. This man. Very busy way in scene, Ishmael Salas joining as well this time back in Joe Joyce's corner he's missed the last few fights but he's back um, it should be very interesting today it's going mean, to be very interesting um, I'm really starting to starting to pack up in here now it's filling up here there's people, people tripping over me watch it. yeah, um, it's going to be interesting I can see a Romanian flag as well Christian Hammers like, he's, he's brought the fans with him too yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about Tommy Fletcher, who I just referenced there. Ladies and gentlemen, um, good afternoon, and don't need welcome to. We're going to go to Tommy Triber. As we get set for Fight Night Live, a great night of championship boxing, tomorrow to be held at the OVO Arena, Wembley. It is all being brought to you by Frank Warren, on behalf of Queensberry, along with their great sponsors, 32 Red, Food Asylum, and Unibet. Tickets are available. They can be purchased through access.com and it will be televised live on BT Sport beginning at 7 p.m. local time. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to begin the weigh-in process. Our first two combatants to the scale compete tomorrow night in a scheduled four-round international light heavyweight contest. First, we will welcome to the scale from Karlovas, Croatia, undefeated with one victory. Let's welcome to the scale, Aaron Vernoga Gregorio. Aaron uh, Gregorio taking to the scales now. He will be boxing Tommy Fletcher. Tommy Fletcher's professional debut. I mean, this fella is 1 0. Tommy Fletcher is 0 oh 0. Big D, you know what I'm going to say, right? Someone's 0. It's got to go. That's it. That's it. Um, yeah, it's a good. I mean, it's good for, for Tommy. You know, it gives him a sort of different feeling. Knowing you're going in there with someone that's obviously he's only had one fight, but knowing you're going in there with someone with a positive record. Well, it's a bit of a venture into the uh, into the unknown, really, exactly, isn't it? He's, exactly. He's coming quite late. Um, 193 pounds for Aaron Bernoga Gregorio. 193 for Tommy Fletcher's opponent. And Tommy Fletcher. Welcome to the scale. His opponent. Filling in to the cruiserweight division. 
He had a stellar amateur career, becoming a two-time national champion and also an international gold medalist. And tomorrow, he makes his professional boxing debut. Let's welcome to the scale, Tommy, the Norfolk Nightmare Fletcher. He's brought plenty of fans with him. The Norfolk Nightmare. I mean, there's so many good nicknames in boxing right now. For me, that is right up there. The Norfolk Nightmare, they call him. <laughs> it's almost as good as Big D or uh, the Chosen One, whatever yeah, you're calling yourself exactly. these days. <laughs> good form of alliteration there. Yes. He's a tall, tall. But he's six, six foot seven. Six foot seven cruiser weight. weight. Uh, just turned oh, twenty weight. years old. He's. Um, wait till you hear what Mark Tibbs has got to say about him. Good. And the game plan for him is to go out there and you know use his attributes. Yeah. Good stage. Making your pro debut. I do. I'm lucky. One hundred ninety-seven pounds for Tommy Fletcher. Tommy Fletcher, big debut tomorrow night, BT Sport at the OVO Arena. Good stage to make your yeah. debut on. Mark Tibbs says that he hits as hard as Deontay Wilder with a tad more boxing IQ. So this is this is high praise for Tommy heading into his pro debut. David, you're looking at him, How's, how does he look, the big man? Good, good. You know, um, like I said, tall, tall, cruiser it. So you just got a guy that uses attributes and, you know, take advantage of that. We're going to get the first face-off. First face-off. Face Once again, ladies and gentlemen, these two compete tomorrow night in a scheduled four-round international light heavyweight contest. It's live on BT Sport tomorrow night. Tommy Fletcher making his professional debut. The S-Jam managed cruiserweight. Long anticipated debut this, apparently it hits Definitely. very, very hard. It could be a short night Our for next Tommy two Fletcher. Our next to the scale compete to our night in a scheduled six round international super lightweight contest. We will first welcome to the scale, coming to us from Poland. He has 21 professional bouts to his credit. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Jacob Laskowski. Jacob Laskowski taking to the stage. If you recognise him, you may have seen this man before. He's actually been in with Campbell Hatton in, uh, in Campbell Hatton's third fight. He's a, he's a game competitor. He'll come to fight. He's only been stopped twice in 21 fights. He's actually uh, got another fight booked in for a couple of weeks' time. The uh, Durable. life of a journeyman day. Yeah, yeah. That's what they do, don't they? If I 142.12 pounds for Jacob Laskowski. I mean, a heavy turn of his And we now welcome to the scale his opponent tomorrow night from Homer Green, undefeated with seven wins. One of his seven wins comes by way of knockout. Let's welcome to the scale Henry the Showman Turner. Big stage for the showman to dazzle. Yes, yes, like I said, I mean, Henry's known for being the slick boxer, so he should go out there tomorrow, you know, and showcase his skills. 141.10 pounds Tremendous for Henry shape. Turner. Seven-time national amateur champion. Yeah, yeah. They don't just give them away, don't they? They don't at all. In good shape, too, so. We got his first stoppage last time out. Good. Um, I guess he'll be looking to do more of the same. Of course, he's young as well, so that mm -hmm. management will start to come in a bit more. And you know, when he gets used to making weight and the, his diet and whatnot, it'll, it'll be easier for him to go out and then start banging people out. But at the same time, in your slick box, so you don't really mm -hmm. have to stop banging everyone out, do you? Because he's relying on his skills, isn't he? Exactly. I'm not getting hit. He's in a good camp. Al Smith, the trainer, there's yes. so many talented boxers in that camp. Dennis McCann, Mickey Burke, who yep, we're going to see. Yep. He's in good hands, he's in good hands. And he seems to be doing the right thing. He just got to stick to it and keep ticking over. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, these two compete tonight in a scheduled six round international super lightweight contest.
Not much given away there in the face of yeah. Henry Turner fight number eight. Tomorrow night, live on BT Sport, the showman returns. They're both in good shape, to be yeah. fair to, to the pair of them. Yeah, look, I mean, look, you see, you see journeyman come in Our all the time and to the bloating in and out. Tomorrow night in a scheduled six-round welterweight contest. First to the scale, fighting out of Sheffield. He is a native of Cameroon. He is a veteran of 41 professional bouts. Let's welcome to the scale, Serge and Bobo. Now, this is a name that UK fight fans will certainly recognise. Um, I mean, only, only a couple of months ago, he took on George Davy on a Queensbury show mm. and came away with a draw that night. I mean, yeah. he's, a, he's a bit of an upsetter. Yes. Part of the 2012 Cameroon Olympic team. He's been up and down the weights, Dave, and he, yeah. he's come in shape, hasn't he? Yeah, definitely, he's in shape. <laughs> As Mickey Burke just said, look at the size of him. <laughs> <laughs> Al Smith adds that he's been doing his press ups, but he, he looks in shape and. Uh, yeah, he's in shape, he's in shape. 152.4 for Serge Ambomo. He knows his way around the ring, so I'd Next to fight. the scale, his opponent tomorrow night from Bexley. Undefeated with six wins. Three of his six wins come by way of knockout. Let's welcome Mickey the Gent Burke Jr. Fight number seven for Mickey Burke. We talked earlier, Dave, about man strength when it comes to Henry Turner. Yeah. Well, this is a young man who's found his. There's last three fights, he stopped them all. Yeah, so he's starting to build into it, you know. Um, 154.12 for Mickey Burke Jr. A lot of fighters have to, you know, get used to the to the weight and whatnot, and they've got to learn how to make weight prop better and properly. And, you know, it changes all the time. The same thing happened to me when I was in the amateurs. But once you start getting comfortable, it was easier to start relying on your power. I mean, I think he came in overweight there. So... Might be a tad over. I'm sure they can. I assume he's got the two hour break to kind of lose it. Yeah, well, it's, it's he seems shocked to be fair. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, these two competing tomorrow night in a scheduled six round welterweight contest. His opponent looks like he doesn't want to be here. <laughs> well, look, I mean, he's a very difficult man to stop. You have to you have to have quite a dig on you to be able to stop him. Mickey Burke has stopped his last three. Serge Ambomo, he's been stopped by Denzel Bentley in the past. Upper middleweight. Of course, this is down away from that yep. so it will be interesting to, to test Mickey Burke's power against Serge Mbomo yep. a steely glare as they come yes. apart there cracking fight tomorrow night on BT that one yeah, he se seems to be, this one seems to be a bit hostile I mean not unprofessional but just hostile you can tell there's no bad words to scale, it's hostile in a scheduled 10 round contest and it will be for the vacant IBF European lightweight championship we will first welcome to the scale from Castel Vispal, Catalonia, Spain. He brings a professional record consisting of 13 wins, just two defeats, five draws, five of his 13 wins come by way of knockout. Let's welcome to the scale, Mark La Guerra Vidal. Good title on the line here. Yeah, yeah, I mean, this, this is Mark Chamberlain's first title fight. Yep. Get him a nice ranking with the IBF. Can't go wrong. It's a good opponent for him. It's a good test. Yeah, I mean, Seems to be doing everything. 134.5 for Mark Vidal. Yeah, Mark Vidal former... European featherweight champion. He's had a Next couple of fights. Kiko Martinez. Championship contest from Portsmouth. He is undefeated with ten wins. Seven of his ten wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is Mark Chamberlain. Mark Chamberlain now. Fight number eleven. First title fight. 134.11 for Mark Chamberlain. Both fighters within the championship weight. We have a fight. And, uh, yeah, look, this this is a and this is a proper fight. Believe yep. me. I mean, this this fellow Mark Vidal has done rounds with Kiko Martinez down at featherweight. We've yep. seen how hard Kiko Martinez can whack. We've yep. seen what he did to Kid Galahad. We've seen him knock out people on these shores before. Obviously, that's down at featherweight. But yep. this is a stern test. Definitely, definitely. I mean, um, he's got to go out there and show his 
show his skills, you know, um, if he stops him, of course he's going to show a lot as well in his build-up and his career. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, these two competing tomorrow night in a 10-round contest. It will be for the vacant IBF European Lightweight Championship. Well, let's grab a quick word with Mark Chamberlain. Mark, first title fight. How are you feeling? All good. Ready to go. Ready to pick it up. <laughs> Were you looking at that belt in the middle, that lovely red and gold belt, and when you thinking, that's going to be mine soon? Yeah, definitely. It's more real when you're there, let's see, next year. When you say you're fighting for a title, it means a lot to you. But then just that second then, when you see it next year, that's what you put all the hard work in for. Big D, any questions for the man here? Yeah, how was your preparation for this fight? Uh, yeah, all good. Uh, had a good training camp, everything's gone to plan. Uh, weight was bang on throughout, so there was no hiccups. I'm ready to go now. And for tomorrow, what's, what's, talk to us, what's going to happen tomorrow? Expect an explosive career best performance. Oh, Doesn't get better than that. Explosive career best performance, Mark Chamberlain. We wish you the best of luck tomorrow night. Good to see you. Thank you. Great. He actually fist bumped me. Normally people don't. Back to Thomas Triber. Our next two combatants to the scale competing tomorrow night in a scheduled 12-round contest. It will be for the Commonwealth IBF International and vacant WBO International Super Bantamweight Championships. We will first welcome to the scale. He is the challenger fighting out of East London by way of South Africa. He has a professional record of 29 wins, four defeats, with 22 of his 29 wins coming by way of knockout. Let's welcome to the scale the former two-weight world champion, Firearm Solani, last born Titan. Well, a very warm reception here for Zolani Tete, his return yes. to the UK. Former two-weight world champion, first venture into super bantamweight. Let's see how he looks on the scale. Shredded. 121.11 for Zolani Tete. Well, that's, of course, a career high for Zolani Tete. He's never been higher than 119 before. We and, now uh, welcome to the scale the defending champion from Doncaster, South Yorkshire, England. His professional record, 31 wins, 6 defeats, with 7 wins coming by way of knockout. He is the current European champion, and tomorrow night, the defending Commonwealth and IBF International Super Bantamweight Champion, Jason the Iceman Cunningham. What a crowd of him today. Oh, yeah. This Jason. is going to be a good fight. I mean, we know Tete's got power. I mean, I'm just going to be a good Jason Cunningham ready, meticulous as always. Yes. This is the fight where perhaps he breaks out, perhaps exactly. he goes closer to a world title. Yeah. I mean, Tete is a good fighter, we definitely know that. Cunningham is operating at that level now. It's just about how he's going to perform tomorrow. Go out there. He's got to be. He's got to remember to go out there and have some fun. Well, the last time we saw him on these shores was 2019. Zelani Tete. It was a defence of his WBO World Bantamweight Championship against John Real Casimero, yeah. and he was upset that night. He was stopped in that fight. Had a bit of inactivity. Blew off a few dust uh, cobwebs a few months ago with a first round stoppage. But this is his first real competitive fight since that night. There must be. A few demons heading into it. Definitely. You know, um, it depends on a fighter and how they choose to take these sort of things. You know, some people use it as a positive, some people use it as a negative. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, these two competing tomorrow night in a scheduled 12-round contest. It will be for the Commonwealth IBF International and vacant WBO International Super Bantamweight Championship. Go on, Jake. Go on, Jake. 
So you see, I mean, with things like this, for Tete, he could be either a driving force for him or a road blocker. Well, a steely face-off there, Jason Cunningham and, uh, and Zolani Tete. I think we're going to try and grab a word with perhaps Tete, perhaps both men. Let's see who we can grab, but... Uh, they see he's got the time for us, you know. Well, look, some people get, some fighters get a bit itchy when it comes to well, the Of course, and look, they, they've just made weight. So, like, you wouldn't know about that. I wouldn't know. You wouldn't, wouldn't know. know, but look, you can see Tete straight on the, on the drink like that. Not yeah. the drink like that, but, you know, I don't know. Well, he's replenishing. He's replenishing. Not straight on the drink like I speak to you, yeah. hey? <laughs> How's it going? Oh, right, Jess, yeah. Let's speak to Jason Cunningham, the Iceman. Another yes. icy face-off. What did you see in Zolani Tete's eyes? His game. He's bound to be. He's been there. He's done it. He's done everything. Ticked yeah. every box. So, I expected nothing else. Uh, going to be a great fight tomorrow. I'm expecting the best of Lani. And uh, that's it. Everything's done now. Just got to get in that ring tomorrow night and do the business. What do you do? I mean, the night before the fight now? Go back and just refuel. Uh, relax. I'm always relaxed. Uh, it'll only really kick in when I get them changing rooms tomorrow. My answer yeah. getting wrapped and then it's yeah. time to do it. Everything's done. Everything's been done in the gym. I've ticked every box. So, I'll, I'm just relaxed now. Refuel. Ready to go. Exactly. Exactly. Is this the fight that announces Jason Cunningham on the world stage? Yes, because of his name, you know, this pedigree of the fighter. Uh, to have his scalp, his, his name on my record, he's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm gunning for that. I can't wait for that tomorrow night. And uh, like I say, we're both highly world ranked as well, with IBF and WBO, so that's going to shoot us up. Both international titles on the line. So, uh, yeah, there's everything to go for. Final question to Big D. I know what you're going to ask him. What's going to happen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cunningham win, uh, whether that's points or whether that's stoppage. Just depends on what Zelani turns up tomorrow night and what he's got left. Uh, I know I'm bringing my best, so yeah, all rides are in, but Cunningham win, whatever way it comes. Right mentality. Best of luck to you tomorrow night, Jason yeah. Cunningham. Thank uh, you. Handshake, we'll go yeah, with that. We're going to bring in Zelani Tete as well here. Zelani, been a while. Is it Tete time? Of course, it's Tete time. It's about time. And what does that mean tomorrow night? What does Tete time mean? Because Jason Cunningham believes that he will announce himself on the world stage tomorrow night mm. at the OVO Arena. I'd love to let him go through that stage, but that unfortunately I can't. I still have to be in that stage, and I need to show people that I, I, I still believe I still deserve to be in that stage. So tomorrow night is my night. What's next after tomorrow night? When or if you beat Cunningham? After I beat Cunningham, definitely I'll get an opportunity to challenge for the IBF World Champion. So it's up to Mr. Frank Warren when he puts the date, whenever I'm ready. Well, we've got a right mentality. It's definitely going to be a good, good clash. Well, Solani, this is a new weight for you. This is super bantamweight. You've never weighed in that much for a fight before. How do you feel at the weight? And do you feel you carry the power up to this weight? I've got much power now than I used to have in, in, in the bantamweight. So I believe... Going to the fight, I'll be much stronger, much sharper. I'm ready. Final question to you, Big D. I know what you're going to ask him. How do you see the fight going tomorrow? Definitely, I'm winning the fight. Uh, it would be up to him if he wants to sleep early or later in the rounds. But definitely, I'm winning the fight and I'm going to take him out. What an answer. Zolani, best of luck to you tomorrow night. Great to have you back and uh, we'll see you soon. Thank you very much, my chair. Thanks for lot. And now back to Thomas Driver, who's been waiting very patiently. I shouldn't be laughing when he's saying that, but it, Ladies and gentlemen, at this time, we are going it's to bring look. in our main event participants tomorrow night. They will be competing in a scheduled 12-round contest. It will be for both the WBO International and WBC Silver Heavyweight Championship. We will first welcome to the scale the challenger. He comes to us from Hamburg, Germany. He brings a professional record consisting of 27 wins, 9 beats, with 17 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Christian Chokan Hammer. Well, Christian Hammer's brought a bit of a crowd with him as well. We can nice. see. Uh, the Romanian flag is there. It is up. Definitely. Hopefully, we see something in this press. I mean, in this face-off on this way. Yeah. Well, look. He said at the press conference yesterday, he didn't just come here for travel. So that suggests he's coming to win. Definitely. I mean, 
like we said, he's not a pushover. Hopefully, Joyce, you know, done something in his way to make it interesting. We'll be, well, it's going to be good. Well, Joe Joyce is in earshot and he's just heard you say, hopefully Joe Joyce does something interesting. That's why I gave him the wink. <laughs> <laughs> but we shall see. Christian Hammer about to take to the scales. Very, very durable heavyweight. We've seen him just take Frank Sanchez, the distance, the WBO number three. He's taken many a good man the distance. Luis Ortiz, Tony Yoka, Alexander Povetkin. It will be, a, it could be a long night for Joe Joyce. Let's see. It's been a year of inactivity. 263 pounds Heavy. for Christian Hammer. I mean, I mean, as a heavyweight. I know it's cliche, but what it really does mean. And now we will welcome to the scale the defending champion from Putney, London, England. Undefeated with 13 wins, 12 of his 13 wins come by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, here is the current British and Commonwealth champion, and tomorrow night, the reigning and defending WBC Silver and WBO International heavyweight champion, Joe Joe. Tremendous ovation here for Joe Joyce. Yes. Two hundred sixty-five point nine for Joe Joyce. Two hundred and sixty five point nine for Joe Joyce, only a couple of pounds heavier than he was against Carlos Takam. Been a year since that fight. Yeah, he's about a kilo heavier than his opponent, Christian Hammer. So they're all around, walking on the same sort of weight. Mm -hmm. He should be coming in tomorrow at the same sort of weight. I mean as a heavy, I don't, I don't think it should fluctuate that much in the next 24 hours. Yeah, they're, they're both around the same sort of weight yeah. as they were in their in their last fights. Um, well, let's see if uh, if Joe Joyce has listened to you, and let's see if he, if he sticks the nut on him. I mean, we've we've seen the trash talk training. I don't know if there's been any face-off training. It's normally pretty serious from Joe Joyce when it when it comes down to this. It is it is business time now, Dave. Yeah, it's business time. I mean, all the hard work's done. You know, you go out there, have your fun now. The game plan's already been put into place. So it's about what's going to happen tomorrow night. I mean, the weighing doesn't really mean anything, does it? Once again, ladies and gentlemen, this is our main event tomorrow night, live on BT Sports. 12 rounds scheduled for both the WBO International and WBC Silver Heavyweight Championship. Stern. I'll tell you what though, that that was pretty intense. Yeah, it was, it was. Do you know what it feels like? The uh, the fun and games now for Joe Joyce are, are, are out the way. It's business mode. You can tell from the look in his eyes, Dave. <laughs> the Romanians are, are shouting off a little bit. Yeah, they've both got, you know, they both they've got, both got support with them. Um, there'll be a handshake. Just a quick handshake there. Joe Joyce. Well, we're going to bring him into shot very shortly. Um, let's see how he feels. He's just. Let's bring you in, Joe. Big Joe. Let's get the uh, let's get the t-shirt on. What did you see in Christian Hammer's eyes? Because I tell you, that looked like quite an intense face-off. Yeah, he looks fired up and ready. So um, I expect an uh, exciting fight tomorrow night. He's uh, game and ready and he'll be trying to knock me out. So um, just going to get back to the room, chill out and get ready for fight night tomorrow. Right. Is it business mode now? Because we've, we've had a bit of fun this week, right? You, you called him a dunderhead and all sorts of stuff. That was fun at the press conference. A muck spout as well. Sorry. Oh, I neglected to mention that. Um, but is it just business mode now? Are you fully just set on uh, taking his head off? Yeah, just um, yeah, go back to the go back to the room, chill out, and uh, just get ready. Maybe like watch him a few times, a few videos to just uh, get my head, um, get my head, my eyes in, and see uh, where I'm going to land the shots and stuff. So yeah, it's uh, fight night looming very close. So uh, yeah, I'm excited. He looks fired up and ready. So. I don't expect you to give us the game plan. I mean, but what are you going to go and go out there and do tomorrow? We'll go out there and knock him out. Uh, um, 
I'll probably you know get to work and see what he's got in the early rounds and um, you know start start figuring figure him out, figure the pattern, see where he's like uh, weak and see where he's like obviously avoid the big shots and that and then um, and yeah start going to work all my own stuff. Have some fun. That's the main thing. You go out and have some fun. What's next after Christian Hammer? Uh, gonna probably be out again in in the autumn so uh, probably be back out in Vegas have, have a bit of time off obviously like maybe two three weeks and then uh, get back out to Vegas and get ready for my next opponent I mean what's going on I don't want to keep digging into it and go on big D the what's going on between you and Parcel uh, I don't know I, like, I mean I've got plenty of other options like if he wants to come and sign the contract and fight me then um, that's up to him and his team to get their act together because I, I don't need him. He needs me. I'm in a higher position, so I don't even really need to take. I need. I don't even need really need to fight Parker. I can uh, can part and fight whoever until I get my shot. Yeah. Well, let's talk about Christian Hammer. He is the man in your way tomorrow night. He's taken many a good man the distance. Tony Oka, Luis Ortiz, Alexander Povetkin, Frank Sanchez. Only a couple of fights ago. Yeah. Do you think you can actually get him out of there, or do you think you're, it's going to be extended a few rounds here? I think it's uh, it's going to be a good a good night's work. I think he's going to he's going to like push me and challenge me, uh, and it's going to be a good, really good fight to get back in. And like he's, it's going to last the rounds because he's a tough guy. So it might even you know do the distance. It might yeah. it might go the twelve rounds. Well, it's been a year since we've seen you in the ring. Again, it was the Ovo Arena. It was Carlos Takam that night. Um, is it a chance to announce to everyone that the juggernaut is back and the juggernaut means business? I'm not taking words out of your mouth, but yeah, definitely that. <laughs> so yeah, now it's time to dust off the, the, the juggernaut and get back in there and pound him down to the ground. I love it. Well, I think we're going to bring in Ishmael Salas, who is again part of the team. Uh, Ishmael, please, please, please join. Um, Good. How's uh, how's how's the big man looking? Oh, Joe. Yeah. Well, good. I'm good on, luck. I'm good on. luck. Yeah, we've been doing a very good training camp. Uh, been a, a, quite long, but we break down. You know, like uh, he start with us, and then uh, something happens. We send him back here to London, and he back again. And you know, we are ready. Yeah, exciting to bring him already to the at, uh, at real time. You know, it's the beauty of, of this sport. How's he looked in sparring? Uh, we did actually more than 100 rounds sparring. Good. So we have like a Michael Hunter. We did a lot of sparring with Michael Hunter. We have a, a, the another, another one from New Zealand, uh, Patrick. Um, Sometimes we did like a four sparring panel at the same time. So being intense uh, sparring. So we've been testing Joe in different ways, against different styles. Because you know, every every fight, every opponent, every fighter, make a fight. Let's try and make a fight. Let, let's make sure that. And Joe is ready for anything coming up from Hema. Well, look, Joe's Joe's 36 now, right? And you've uh, you're training him. Do you see him still improving? Yes, sure. He improving uh, day by day. We've been doing a. Uh, uh, many drills you know because the you see the anatomic of uh, joe is a huge anatomic so uh, I've, I've been focusing working in the biomechanics uh, uh, work you no know? so this thing mean uh, how how he can move all the big structure is my you know it's my strong point as a trainer every trainer have their own style and yeah. um, we've been he been improving in technically I'm back up with the good fitness, with the fitness trainer come, uh, 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 great, he's in great shape and he's the, for the next level and he have to prove tomorrow at the real time. And you and Joe's bond, I'm, I'm assuming it's stronger than ever, I mean I remember working with you when I was an amateur Yes. And Joe was really working with you so I'm assuming you two have a good connection. Yeah, very, very good connection, the most important thing in any fighter is if he can listen to to the trainer, because uh, it's no we have to meet in the halfway. So the fighter have to come to the halfway. The same thing we have to do with the trainer have to do. So we 
click from this thing, see it's pro yeah. debut. I see it moving a lot smoother now, and um, he's got that whole Cuban and yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I try, I try to. I, you know, one one of the things we're looking for, yo, ya no esté eh, eh, just in front, too frontal. So That's we, we his bones. yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we try, we try to move for always to the angles, you know. Fantastic. Well, thank you for thank joining you. us, Ismail, and and good luck to you tomorrow night. Thank you, thank you. Oh, no, there you go. <laughs> it's, it's all love here. It's all love here. Yeah, and no, there's going to be sellers. maybe no, some more love. Nice. I don't know if you've met this man. He's actually taller than you, yeah, Mr. Very Tommy very Fletcher. Very good to see you. Good to see you. Yeah. Debut time. Ready to roll. How are you feeling? I feel good, mate. You know, um, now I've weighed in, set in. Like it's real. It's real. And I'm, I'm ready to smash it. Yeah. Good card to make your debut one as well. I mean, we were just saying it when he was weighing in. Mm. You can't really go wrong when you're making your sort of debut on these sort of big cards. Exactly. Yeah. I'm fighting someone undefeated. He's one and zero, so he's going to come game, and uh, I think that will play in my favour. I think he'll walk onto one, and, and uh, I believe I've got a good slot on the uh, card, so it's going to be massive. You know, I'm not fighting at York Hall. I'm fighting at Wembley Arena tomorrow night, so expect fireworks. Well, look, he's an unbeaten guy, right? Obviously, he's just one and zero. I'm not sure there's going to be much YouTube footage of this man. It's a bit of a bit of an adventure here, a bit of a venture into the unknown, right? Yeah, definitely. Um, I don't know much about him, but I, don't, I feel like I'll get behind my jab and I'll smash him. So, yeah. I mean, no experienced amateur. I mean, the same thing used to happen in the amateurs when you would go out there, you didn't know who your opponent was until the actual day after the weigh-in. So I think you just got to go out there with the same sort of mentality, just go out there, have your fun, you know, mm. rely on what you know, your attributes. I mean, they say you're a big banger, you just got to go out there and have your fun and just, when your hands keep, when you keep letting your hands go, I'm shit on the Definitely. Yeah, just, come just get behind the jab and I think just box, you know, like Mark would say, he would say, don't go in there swinging, don't go in there crazy, just just box, you know, if it's a four round contest, don't do all my work in the first minute, and then I think um, what will be will be, you know, I'll smash him. Simple as that, what's written can't be changed. You've got the right mentality. You only get one debut, right? Exactly. So, some fighters absolutely rush it, they go berserk. Cough, cough. Look, do, look, do you remember? Do you even remember, remember your debut? debut? Boy, I seen it the bowl when I just charged over at the corner. <laughs> I just started letting my hands go. Yeah. And then, um, obviously, as time went on, you start to realise you've got to settle. And like you just yeah. said, don't do all your work in the first minute or the first round. You've got yeah. four rounds to kind of do it. Yeah. You know, just work over on the ring. There's one extra round in the amateurs. Yeah. I mean, you can't really go wrong, can you? I think not only is it my debut, I'll be learning, you know. I'm, I'm setting myself up for my second fight, exactly. third fight, you know. So it's not just, not only is it a debut, I'm seeing it as a learning curve as well. And it's so. going to be a new freedom to get them mm. gloves on. Yeah, definitely. Ten yeah. ounce gloves. I'll the be banging hard, I'll be punching hard, yeah. That's bad news for all cruiserweights out there. This man in ten ounce gloves. I think we're going to bring in Mark Tibbs, the man who has uh, waxed lyrical about yeah, you, said a lot of, yeah, lot of yeah, good yeah, things. Good to see you, Mark. Yeah, Please jump in the middle. Good to see you. Um, Put me next to this giant. Well, well, <laughs> Two I'm, I'm having to stand next to him as well. Um, Mark, you've said a lot of things about this man. Here's your chance to say them again or, or add some flavour to them. Well, listen, if you listened carefully, yeah, I did say he's got the, the, the power of a Deontay Wilder, and I stand by that, yeah. And uh, he's got a great ring IQ, and I say that again but he's 20 years old. Young. You get me, right? So listen, if he's, uh, he's under a bit of pressure tomorrow, that's all about that now tomorrow, and in the pressure, he's got to enjoy the moment and relax, stay focused, and don't waste nothing. He's going to be a very, very exciting fighter. You just got yeah. to remember, go out there and have fun. I mean, he's yeah. got a good trainer with him, experienced trainer, he's been at world level. Just got to go out there and listen to him. I mean, he's got the right mentality already. He's very cool, calm and collected, so you know what you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. No, he's ready, he's ready. He's, uh, this is an exciting time for, for Tom and his family and, uh, and, and, and the Origin Gym where I'm at. You know, we're all, we're, everyone's behind him and making sure he's, 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 his training regimes are balanced and he's fueled. Yeah, because he wasn't the, most, uh, the best eater until he comes to us. <laughs> But um, yeah, so 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 no, it's, uh, it's going to be a very very exciting time for, for Tommy Tommy Fletcher, the Norfolk Nightmare. That's good. <laughs> good question, hey, for Go, teams. go. Where hey. do you see Tommy fitting in with the cruiserweights domestically? Oh, um, what right now? Not right now, but oh. you know, in the future. I yeah, mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, he's, he's 14 stone right now. Yeah, he's 14 stone wet right now. Right. So Tommy thickens out. Yeah, thickens out, matures, and uh, he, listen, trust me. Honestly, trust me. Watch this guy, and uh, you'll know what I mean. But listen, he's 20 year old. But watch him. Is there a future at heavyweight? Do we think for, for Tommy Fletcher? You yeah. just said he's 40 stone, wet, wet through. He's 20 years old. Yeah. He's, he's taller than David Adelaide. 
if this guy has still got the flavour in seven, six, five, six, seven, eight years' time, if he's still got the flavour, he'll be a heavyweight. One million percent. Yeah. Look at the height for him. Definitely, he's got to use the attributes. And the power, I keep mentioning the power, and uh, with Tommy, with Tommy, this is what I've done with Tommy, he come in our gym swinging from the heels. Incredible power. But now he's, he's honing his, his, uh, his missiles, so to speak, he's honing them and he's placing them. Yeah, get me? So, so he's honing them and placing them. And, and uh, what was I going to say now? I forget what I was going to say. Basically, he's, uh, it's all about maturing and uh, being guided, right? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, you're, uh, you've sold him to me. I mean, I, I was already sold. I was already sold, but you've certainly sold him. Uh, Mark, Tommy, Good luck to both Thank of you, you tomorrow night. You only get one debut. Remember that. Absolutely. Enjoy yourself. Cheers. Thank thanks, you, Dev. Thank, Thank you. Thanks, Cheers. Top man. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right. Well, look. That's us. That was the official weigh-in. Joe Joyce, Christian Hammer, tomorrow night, live on BT Sport. Do not miss it. We're live from 7 o'clock. You're, you're not going to miss it, are you? I'm not going to miss it. I'm going to be tuning in from 6.30. Six, oh yeah, well, I mean there's probably a lot of stuff on before that as well, yeah, but yeah. 7 o'clock is when we go live, we will see you then, do not miss it. Joe Joyce, he's the biggest, toughest man I've ever sparred, ever met. Strong, tough, fit, tough lad. And Jason Cunningham defends his European super bantamweight title. Oh, and that's the reason why. Goodness me, first punch in the fight. Zolani, I'm going to fill you in. I'm going for the world title, and that's that. He knows he's in the last chance saloon here and the light heavyweight division's just waiting to explode. Oh, goodness me. Well, there's a terrific shot in the opening round.